Hi all, this is Jake. And two or three years ago, Carrie and I recorded a guest episode for another podcast, the Lifemark podcast, which is about Lifetime and Hallmark movies. One of my favorite podcasts ever. And so I thought, you know, maybe some of you hadn't heard it, and maybe you are at home with all the um, social distancing and whatnot that is being recommended, and perhaps you would like something to listen to. So I thought I would put it out on the main feed. I hope you enjoy it. And then if you do enjoy it, I think it's worth seeking out and going through some of the other back episodes of Life Mark which is still one that I really enjoy. So here it is. I hope you like it. I'm Jake. I'm Carrie. And this is Life Mark, a made-for-TV podcast. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you might be wondering where Michelle and Stephanie are. Um, basically, we proposed an exchange with them where we would host an episode of Life Mark and then at some point they would host an episode of our podcast, which is Love You Like Crazy. And what do we do on Love You Like Crazy, Carrie? We read YA books and trash them. Yes. Well, sometimes we like them. You, but we kind of trash even the ones we like. We I, trash I the ones it. we love. We really trash the ones we don't love. Yeah. So at some point, Michelle and Stephanie should be doing a guest episode over on our feed. And I'm sure they'll let you know when that happens. And if you like what we do, then you can also go over there and hear us yelling about books a whole lot. But today we are talking about a Hallmark movie, Beverly Lewis's The Shunning. And um, this is a movie about, well, what is this movie about, Carrie? This movie is about um, a young woman living with her Amish family, about to get married to her Amish fiance. Or is she? Right. Are any of those things true? We don't know. We don't. But a mysterious English woman comes to town and, well, shit gets real. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> is that how you would describe what happens, That's Carrie? exactly how I would describe things. So um, Katie is the main character. Right. She is um, a beautiful Amish girl who wears a surprising amount of eyeliner. Mm-hmm. For a movie about, you know, the plain folk. Right. Um, I guess we start with kind of a montage, or not a montage, but we sort of pan over the Amish countryside. and We do. There's a hot balloon. Because that's how you know it's, it's plain folk, is when they're traveling by hot balloon. Yeah, it's old timey. Yeah. And then a black limo drives down a dirt road. There's a, uh, there's a woman wearing sunglasses inside the limo. Mm-hmm. Um, who is seems to be some kind of rich woman or successful woman. Well, she's being driven, so she's she's richer than I am. Yes. And uh, she has an assistant who is, like, constantly on her phone. There is a black limo driver who uh, remarks that he doesn't think that there's another bro within 50 miles or something. Yeah, he thinks that maybe the reason that nobody is talking to them is not because they're English, but because he's black. Yeah. Oh, they pull over to look at some kids, and that's a little creepy. That is super creepy. They're just watching kids play and kind of looking at them wistfully, and you're like, um, this is not normal. That's not normally how we like people to behave around, around our children. But you know what? I got nothing to say about that. <laughs> that's just really not how you're supposed to act. My comment at the time is, what are they going to do? Call 911? Uh, let's see. Yes. So Katie's in the barn uh, with doing things with hay. I forget exactly what. she's, And then she goes up the ladder. And what is up the ladder? Not a boy, but a guitar. Yeah. So, right. It's the forbidden music of the guitar. Mm -hmm. The seductive instrument of the, of the English. Yeah. Um, and she's not singing a song from the hymn book anyway. She's singing English music. Right. Is it a song that she wrote or is it a... I think it is. I believe it's a song that she wrote. Yeah. But I don't know for sure. I really, I was hoping, as I mentioned when we were watching it, that she would go up there and there would be a bag full of buttons or something. That <laughs> something the, uh... really mysterious. <laughs> well, the Amish aren't allowed to wear buttons. It's too fancy. Mm -hmm. It's too prideful, I think. It is prideful. This is, I have no idea what that's based on. Maybe that's not actually true. Um... 
Yeah. So Benjamin, who's her brother or someone's brother? That's her older brother. Yeah. Because her older brother was born just a little bit before she was and has a wife and kids, but also still hangs out around the house a lot. He's always there. I don't know if his house is like next door, Mm -hmm. but yeah. So he comes up and he's like, yo, what you doing? Mm -hmm. Thought you're going to get rid of that. Your wedding's coming up. And we're all like, ooh, wedding, a scandal. Um, and she's getting married to... She's getting married to the bishop of their community. Yes. Um, and here we encounter something which will perhaps be a problem throughout the movie, which is accents. Oh, they're bad. <laughs> so at first I was like, are they all Irish? Are they German? Are they vampires? Are they from New Zealand, maybe? We, they're, 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 you know, we, we understand that there's, you know, a pretty prominent accent that, that goes through the, the Amish community. Like that, I get. That was not what we were hearing. No, it was not at all. It was not close. <laughs> I don't know what it was. So at first we we're like, oh man, maybe everyone's Irish. Occasionally. But- Occasionally, it was a little bit Italian, maybe. Yeah, because we heard like a a mama at one point, and you know she kept calling her father da or did or did, <laughs> but it was it was all over the place, and I would say there were more than a handful of times where both Jake and I were like, "Wait, what they say?" Yeah, that was it was a really a problem. I often couldn't quite figure out. What was. I think. If you're going to watch this movie, you might want to put on closed captioning. Right. We could have done that, but we didn't because I didn't know how. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, failed because we're stupid. Yes. That's, uh, I'm, I'll stick with that. Um, let's see. So she's getting married to the bishop. Uh, her father gives her her dowry, which is like a, a an envelope full of money. Mm-hmm. We debated a little bit about how much money that actually was. It might have been nothing. It might have been all. Um, it was a pretty small stack. So if it was 20s, you know, a couple thousand. If it was, you know, ones, she might have $13. <laughs> right. Um, and I think they said what they were going to do with the money, but I didn't understand the well, accent. So well, I think what she, wa- what the parents wanted was for the bishop to, to make a an addition to the house for all the grandkids that, that Katie was going to give them. Right. And she's like, uh, yeah, we'll put it to good use. Right. Oh yeah. So then Katie goes to the bishops and they're the bishop's place. And he has like four kids already. I think he has, he has a few because his, uh, his last wife died. We don't know how she's just dead. Several times in this movie, we were hoping that every, that it was going to turn into a murder mystery or maybe just some kind of slasher film. But, but none of this happened and it was actually a little disappointing. Every time we were disappointed. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the shunning could have gone <laughs> so many different it could places. Have, partly it's because we kept thinking about The Shining. I mean, it's the same name, basically. Yeah. Or The Shinning. The Shinning. Yeah. Which it's is... All, it's all of a piece. Because I can't watch scary things... The only shining I have seen is the shining. Yeah. I'm a wuss. <laughs> well, that that's pretty bloody for a Simpsons episode. It is. Um, yeah, so there's the pro- precocious kid with the bucket of milk who hears her singing a pop song, which is scandalous. Oh, and he's all, can you sing for me some more? And she's like, oh, no, let's just keep walking. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's and, not going to come back to bite you. Yeah, no, that that obviously was just a one-off thing that will never return. Never. Um, And then uh, the bishop tells her, you know, that he wants her to quit her job being a housekeeper for some English folk because she's getting, getting married. So then they have a thing. She goes to the house that she's housekeeping and she finds a box full of sparkly things. Which the Amish love sparkly mm-hmm. things. It's, it's their, true, they do. It's their. It's like their kryptonite. Yeah. And she has a flashback to Emo Kid. Oh, Emo Kid. So Emo Kid was the boy that she loved. Now, she's getting married to the bishop, but she loved this boy. What happened? Um, but she lets her hair down, and she puts on this sparkly necklace, and she's thinking about the time that she was sitting by the river with a handsome boy, 
and he's teaching her how to play the guitar. And he's mysterious and he's handsome, but he's Amish and she's Amish. And oh, he understands her. He takes off his hat. He takes off his hat. <gasps> he kisses her on the lip. It. I mean, my God. Multiple times. So this is a movie. Racy. This is a movie about a woman who's going to hell, clearly. Obviously. It's a cautionary tale. Um, let's see. Oh, so then, yeah. So this is where the English woman comes to town and like starts asking around, trying to find a woman named Rebecca who gave birth 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the shopkeeper, uh, Ephraim Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard to understand. <laughs> His name was Ephraim. We got that much. Um, it sounded like Yoda. We're going to go with that. So Ephraim Yoda. <laughs> says, He's all, you don't ask questions. We're simple folk. Leave us alone, bitch. He says, uh, there must be 350 Amish people around. So um, there must be at least a dozen Rebecca's. Which, okay. So 350 people. So 175 of them are women and 12 of them are Rebecca. Like, are there only five different women's names in the Amish community? Well, there's Rebecca. There's Rebecca. There's Katie. And I think there's some Sarah's. Yeah. That's yeah, that's it. true. That probably gets you to around 90%. Yeah. But then the the uh, the one the woman that you said was the best character. The best character in the whole movie. Um, This, this, this lady comes out and she knocks on the, the window of the... Of, of the limo and you know the window slowly comes down she's like oh, okay what do you want to know i know everybody around here i'm so super old i know everybody um what's up and she's like okay so i need to know about this rebecca chick who had a kid and the lady knew the date of the kid's birth and it was like oh you know the right rebecca holy crap life is good Give her this letter. Okay, I'll give her this letter. And the shopkeeper, Ephraim Yoda, is all like, Lady, do you want all your shit? And she's like, Leave me alone. I'm talking. Obviously, this is an important plot point. He's like, I want to put all your shit back. She's like, Hold your horses, which I thought was really clever because everybody has horses. <laughs> Yes, that's <laughs> that's actually pretty much exactly what happened. I am not exaggerating at all. Um, yeah, <laughs> and she gets the letter to give to Rebecca, and the limo drives away, and you're like, "Oh, I wonder what that letter is all about." We'll find out. Yeah. So then we cut to dinner at. So Katie's last name is Lamp, I think. I, it's something. It's Lamp. It's Lamp. I don't know. So it's really hard to understand these accents. <laughs> yeah. So dinner at the Lamps and the bishop is there with his kids. Yes, that's right. That's why she went over there was to invite him to dinner. That's true. So they're at dinner. They're all there. And uh, she's made a shoe fly pie, which everyone thinks is delicious. And he's really stoked because the kids like it and... Turns out it's Katie's recipe, and they're like, oh, man, we're going to get to get chocolate pie every night. Woo! It does sound pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I th I, actually, I don't know what's in shoe fly pie. It just looked like chocolate. I No, I think that's... Okay, good. I'm going to look it up on... Or no, I'm going to ask Siri. What's in shoe fly pie? How may I assist you? Yeah. <laughs> what's in shoe fly pie? The main ingredient in shoe fly pie is molasses. All right. Well, so, it, it is not a chocolate pie. Shoe fly pie is a molasses pie or cake that developed its traditional form among the Pennsylvania Dutch in the 1880s, who ate it with strong black coffee for breakfast. Oh, so I wonder if it's wrong to, that they're having it for dinner. I think it's incorrect, and um, we need to shoot people. So uh, the precocious child mentions that he heard uh, Katie singing, and it was not from the hymn book. It was from the other hymn book. But he thought it was really nice. Yeah. Could you sing it for me again, Katie? Could you sing it for me again? Oh, no. We do not sing the songs of the English. Uh-oh. So that's that's very stressful for everyone, this whole music thing. Mm -hmm. Then afterward, the parents are upstairs and the mother uh, brings out the letter and is like, Ella May gave me this letter from that she got from an English woman. And I'm too scared to open it. So he opens it and he reads it. He's like, oh, fuck. And then she reads it and she's like, oh, fuck. 
So they go to burn the letter. We still don't know what's in the letter. We do not. But the letter gets burned poorly. Yes. Bad technique. Now, they put it directly into the fire, which is not, it's not like coals at this point. There's actually still flames. But yet it seems to be a slow burning paper. I think it's made of asbestos. And a piece of it gets stuck. So later, Katie finds it. Right. Dun, dun, dun. But first, because it's at night, we cut to the full moon. Full moon. Because we always do. And that made me hope that there was going to be a werewolf subplot. So many things that could have happened. Uh, let's see. There's an interlude where Mary throws rocks at her friend's window. And then... I think you mean Katie. Oh, what did I say? You said Mary. Katie threw rocks at Mary's window. Yes, I screwed that up. It's okay. Um, and we find out that the emo boy's name was Daniel Fisher, and he drowned, but they never found the body. So there's hope that there. he comes back as a zombie <laughs> or a werewolf. Right. Uh, he doesn't come back as a werewolf or a zombie or a body or anything. It's really just left up in the air, and it's kind of pathetic. Right. Let's see. So we go to... The hotel where the w rich woman is staying. Tell me about this hotel name. The hotel name is... Um, Proximity? Proximity, which is a great name for a hotel. <laughs> it's the best name for a hotel. Yeah. Because it is close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you want to be in a hotel that's in the center of everything, you want to stay at Proximity. Yeah. And this doesn't really pay off until later. But the other great thing about the about staying at Proximity is that when someone comes in the room, they're behind a rippled glass thing. So you can't actually see who they are. So every time someone comes in the room, you can get really, really excited and then really, really disappointed when it's not who you want. Because the other thing is that everyone wears the same clothes in this movie. So... You can't tell. Like yeah. You're like, oh, there's something black moving back there. Uh, this is where we find out that um, the rich woman, the, her assistant says, don't you want to take your prescription? Don't you want to stay ahead of the pain? And she says, no. And so this is how we know that she's dying. Because that's the only thing that's going to happen in a Hallmark movie. She's not going to have like a curable disease. It's going to be deadly. I don't know, Roger Eber or somebody talked about the things that you least want to have happen in a, to you in a movie if you want to live. Like, number one is cough. If you cough <laughs> in a movie, you're dead. You're not going to make it to the end. And if you have pain, then obviously you, you are, you're, you're so you're on far the way gone. Out. Yeah. The rich woman is called by her husband, I guess, Mr. Bennett, who has a very strange accent. We think he might be English. Yeah. Like, actually English, <laughs> right. not British. Not yeah, British English. Yeah, not American English. And he's wearing, you know, a fancy jumper. And he's in front of his fancy car. He's got a five o'clock shadow. A big fancy house. And he's like, babe, when are you coming home? Oh, don't ask me any questions, but I got some stuff to do. You People. Right. I have the same problem with YA books that I do with this movie. And like. Every Everything. season, every season of Lost. Nobody communicates. No one says what they're doing, and it's a real problem. I mean, sure, it's it's great for drama, but it's not good for being a human, right? It's there's no good reason why people wouldn't like. You've been married to this guy for I don't know how long. Maybe it's been a day. Maybe it's been twenty years. Or 19 years. I, I, whatever. I just tell the guy, hey, when I was 16, I had this baby. And now that I'm sick, I want to find her. Your husband probably could have helped do some research. Instead of having just you and your assistant, maybe you could have three people on the, on the case. Maybe you would have found out a little easier. Maybe he wouldn't be fucking worried, sick, that his dying wife is in the middle of East Jesus Nowhere, Pennsylvania. And people don't communicate. Yeah. And I, like, I thought that he didn't know that she was sick even, but that was not true. He knew. He knew that she was sick, but he knows that his sick wife is not getting the surgery she needs. And he has no idea why. I mean... That would scare the shit out of me. And he's just like, oh, there's nothing I can do. She won't tell me. No, people talk. Talk to each other. I'm making um, hand motions Yeah, that are angry. Yes, I can verify. Carrie is angry. And at one point, uh, he asks her, 
what she wants to accomplish or something. And she says anything and nothing or nothing and anything or something. And he says, I don't know what that means, which I appreciated the movie acknowledging that that made no sense. It, yeah. I was like, well, neither do we. But yeah, so there's a lot of secrets being kept. Um, she's keeping secrets from her husband and people are keeping secrets from Katie. And Katie's keeping secrets from them, too. I mean, she's hiding her guitar. She's putting on the sparkly jewelry. I mean, everyone's keeping secrets. And it would be so much better if she said, I'm still sad about my other boyfriend. I don't want to get married right now. Right. Isn't Rum Springa a thing? Aren't I supposed to be able to, like, <laughs> go get wasted for a couple of years? Like, when did that happen? Yeah. These are all, These are all legit questions. questions. Um, instead, she goes to the bishop and confesses about that she's been singing and he asks her if she really feels sorry about it. And she says she does. She doesn't say that, though. Oh. She says something like, I guess I am. I yeah, guess. that's true. And That's true. I, I was surprised that he didn't uh, bear down on that yeah, one a little more. Yeah, because that was, you know, that was a non-answer. And I yeah. appreciate the fact that she gave a non-answer. Because then she's not lying to the god. Yes. Who would shun her. No no damn shunning happens in this movie until we're like three quarters of the way through. Really. The title of the movie is The Shunning. Yeah. And there was hardly any shunning. It's true. Even when it happened, it wasn't. It was a very, I mean, she gets shunned. Yeah. Gets to sit at the shunning table with her shunning chair. All by herself in the same room as everybody else, but, you know, with her back to them. And she's, you know, having her, her shun dinner and they can't talk to her. And she keeps trying to interject into the conversation and they're like, oh, we're shunning you. Yeah. That, we'll get to that. Yeah. So he tells her to destroy the guitar. She's like, oh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, we have another flashback to Emo Boy. She finds the piece of the letter that didn't burn. And then we start asking questions. What is the piece of the letter that gets left behind? It's not like one scrap where it says the. <laughs> it's or, not a tiny corner that's got a scribble. It's the fancy envelope with the fancy embossed stationery yeah. that's got the name of the letter writer all over it. It's like, really? Of course. Yeah. Laura Mayfield. So Laura Mayfield's name is the only thing left unburned. Oh, and, and you remember, so her mother is peeling a potato. She sure is. Using a knife. Yep. Which Katie says, who is Laura Mayfield? And Laura's mom cuts herself. She sure does. She's fine. She has a bandage for a scene or two before the movie forgets that she cut herself. Uh, but then Katie goes up to the attic or someplace or in the barn or some somewhere where there's a box full of her yeah. stuff where <laughs> she knew where box the box was, yes. but she'd never gone through it before or never found a very specific piece of clothing and asked questions before. So there's a, a fancy dress with a name a dress like a baby yeah like a baby dress but but like a fancy one that you would have had you know sort of 80s style of smocking but it's got on the collar a name embroidered on it which is Catherine mayfield <gasps> what could that mean impossible to say so hard probably to does, guess probably doesn't mean anything probably really means nothing yeah uh, I have some notes that I forget what they mean. Ask me. Maybe I know. Well, I see Samuel dash time has come. And then underneath it, I have written so much acting. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that because I think, was that the, the scene where they're like, okay, we got to tell you what's going on. The time has come to. Oh yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, we must, we, we can't hide this from you any longer. You come down with the dress and you've you've got the name. Maybe you're putting two and two together because you're not that stupid. There's a lot of overacting. Um, the dad is emotional. The mom is emotional. Katie super emotional. Why didn't you tell me this? Uh, my next note is lots of nice porches. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the best thing about Pennsylvania Dutch country. I would say are the porches. Yeah, very lovely. Lots of sitting. Lots of lemonade. Uh, so Katie seeks out LMA, uh, who says that she's caught all the babies in this county. Except That's the one. crazy old lady. Right. She caught all the babies, but one. But one. Which one? Which one? Oh, my God. 
Who could it be? Oh, this is really tough to put together. Which of the four characters in this movie could it possibly be? Huh. The one named Katie? Oh, my God. With a dress that says Catherine? It all fits together. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Overacting? So, so that happens. So then, oh, yeah. So then there's a scene that I don't know why it's in the movie. Tell me about this. So Katie gets in a buggy. She sure does. And she drives to a store called Level 23. Yep. And she goes in and there's a black woman dressed kind of modestly. And she says, I want to look like you. And the black woman kind of looks at her like, um, this seems racist. I'm not sure how to how to deal with this situation. And then Katie's like, no, no, like clothing wise. She's like, oh, well, let me find some fancy duds for you. And I thought there's going to be a makeover montage in this movie. And was there? No. Was it disappointing? Yes. What happened instead? Uh, a few seconds later, she's wearing uh, like a red top and some black uh, pants and stuff. And then there's a montage of her walking around Lancaster. Now she is walking around the city wearing high heel shoes. That doesn't seem canonical. That can't be right. Now she's always worn pretty basic flat shoes. And these were high pointy heels, really tall stiletto style. Um, Homegirl would have broken her ankle. Like, right? I would think so. Or at least, like, kind of totter around. I would have broken my ankle, and I have worn high heels. They were that tall. Let me ask you another question about this scene. Mm -hmm. Does this outfit or anything that happens in the scene return in the rest of the movie? It does not. When she comes out of the store wearing this, this outfit, that is, let's be honest, a little outdated for the time period in which the movie takes place it looks more like it, she walked out of clueless it's like sort mm. of a plaid top you know eh, okay i guess we can go with that um her hair oh that's right now it had been all up in a bun and all up in the the bonnet and all of that that stuff but when she takes off it's perfectly straight like she just got a blowout and i don't think that level 23 had a salon in there for her to get her hair done. I feel like she had highlights as well. Oh, she had some stuff going on. I mean, she's been wearing eyeliner and mascara the whole time. And no one's saying anything except for me. But obviously, she knows how to do her hair, too. So she is a very prideful woman. Yeah. But no, none of the stuff shows up. You would think, like, somebody would find the bag or something. But it just... It should have been edited out, but it wasn't. And the only thing that happened was at the very end, she's walking down the street and she's standing there and a taxi goes by and the taxi has two Amish people in it. And who should be behind Katie but Katie's mom? And they don't know that it's each other and the mom's staring wistfully at the Amish people and Katie's staring wistfully at nothing. Um... And then the scene ends and we're, we're back to P Pennsylvania Dutch country. And we're at the wedding. We're at the wedding. So they have the wedding and they, you know, they ask, does anyone object to this wedding? And Katie says she can't do it. She says, I'm sorry. And she leaves. She does. She runs out. So I think that in a well-made movie, it would probably either, either one of the characters would do something. Or it would cut quickly to something else. In this case, it's neither. And, <laughs> <laughs> it's so awkward. And there's just a really long, awkward pause, which I also loved. I thought that I don't think that that's the right choice, but I did like it. Because really, what are you going to say? I mean, you just and, and all you see is the, the fiance just sort of standing there looking like a chump. And it just keeps the, the camera just stays on him. For an uncomfortable amount of time. Yeah. The mom runs around looking for Katie. Katie has dirty hands and is crying. The dirty hands are not explained. We thought that maybe she was digging up the guitar with her hands. Oh, yeah. I don't think we said that she oh, buried yeah, she the didn't, guitar. Yeah, she didn't destroy it. She buried it. Right. And it's in a nice hard shell case. And uh, so I, I thought to myself, this is actually 
probably I've played guitars that have been stored worse than this. <laughs> um, and all I could imagine was the guitar clawing its way out. Zombie I would, guitar. I would like to see that movie. Um, the father threatens Katie with shunning, which is the first time that that's been mentioned and which made us very excited because, because really, finally, like, why else are we watching this movie? She, you know, he tells her to, that she needs to go to the bishop and beg him to take her back. She refuses and she says, he thinks that I'm a nice Amish girl, but I'm not. And he says, I'm your father. Do what I say. And she says, you are not my father. <gasps> and da, da, da. Uh, yeah, he uh, there's some more acting, I think. Oh, some serious acting. Then uh, Katie's two moms confront each other. They do. Uh, and a bunch of old white dudes debate what's to be done for Katie. And I think they a, come up to a... a the perfect solution. Well, it's much like our current government, you know, like just when you get a crowd of old white men together, they definitely will know what's the best for the women mm -hmm. in the community. And what's best for the women in their community? Shun! 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 Now we finally get shunned. We do. It took us long enough. We've got like 20 minutes left in this movie and there's finally some shunning. Before we get to the shunning, though, I just want to mention one of the town elders wearing really nice glasses really nice like yes. rimless yeah surprisingly delightful that and guy needs to be shunned i think so prideful yeah. yeah for her own good she has to be disciplined and i was thinking somebody was going to get whipped but no 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 silent shunning. treatment yeah that's the way you do it um so katie's feeding the cows uh her brother maybe i don't know somebody is it her brother i thought it was the bishop oh maybe it's the bishop I don't know. They all look the same. <laughs> They've all got the same beard. They're all pasty white men. It's really hard to tell them apart. Anyway, uh, someone named John, I think, confronts Katie and tells her that she's being shunned and explains what that involves, which probably she already knows. But, but for our benefit, we now know nobody can talk to her and this might last her whole life. Yeah. Until she, unless she can truly confesses and the town is satisfied that she's a good Amish woman again. And the town might never be satisfied. That's the thing. It's not like you can apologize, have it come from the heart, and they're like, okay, cool. They can decide that that was not good enough and continue to shun you. Yes. So we get two scenes of shunning. First, we get the shunning table, mm -hmm. which is great. It was great. Now, here's the thing. Yes. So if the fiancé you left at the altar is the bishop... In charge of unshunning you. Are you ever going to get unshunned? Well, it seems like there is a power imbalance there. I, you know, I think that in the Amish community, it's possible that there may be a problem with the patriarchy. There might be. I mean, I think if she married him right then and there, it's probably the only way that she'd get unshunned because he's the dude who can unshun her. Anyway. anyway, so the shunning table. They set up in the kitchen or dining room or whatever, a small table, seating for one, and then like a dinner. So it's basically me when I go out to eat. I mean, she doesn't have an iPhone, so she can't listen to podcasts. That's the main downside here as far as I'm concerned. But there it is. Table, chair, plate. She gets the same food as everyone else. Yeah. And then there's the adult table except there's kids there too where the parents and her brother and her brother's kids and whoever else is there so she gets in and she tries to talk to them and i don't even remember what she says but nobody will talk to her and she leaves without eating dinner because she is willful she is shunned she is and then she goes to the store she does she needs black thread it was never explained why she needed a black thread but she goes to the store to get the black thread Ephraim turns his back. Even Yoda turns his back. She's standing there with her $2 trying to buy the thread. Everyone in the store is turning their back, acting all scared of her. They won't even take her $2. No. And I'm like, cool, just leave it on the counter. But no, she leaves without her thread. Or just take the thread without paying for it because... Who, what are they going to do? They can't tell her, stop. Well, no, then that would be that would be a sin, and you can't do that. I mean, you're already going to hell. Pretty much. So, yeah. what the heck? Might as well take the thread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live large. Take all the thread you want. You want some bread? You want some cheese? <laughs> yes. 
Anyway, that that's my uh, that's my fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> It's like being a ghost, except you're still alive. My fanfic is so much different than yours. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, she. Oh, I guess there's also a thing. She throws rocks at her friend's window at night again mm-hmm. during the full moon. The second full moon. <laughs> and uh, her friend go, goes to the window, looks at her, and then uh, turns away. Uh, so lots of shunning there. So much shunning. We got three shuns. She goes to her dad, who is doing some kind of woodwork or something. I forget what he's doing. And she leaves the dowry money in the envelope by him and goes away. And then she goes with a shovel. She gets a shovel. <gasps> and gets the guitar. Yeah. So um, we had thought maybe she had dug up the, the guitar earlier, and that's why her hands were dirty. Yeah. Because they were covered in, in dirt. Like she had gone to... Dig, but no, no, that she gets the guitar and she goes and she starts playing the guitar on the front, the lovely front porch of their home. Daddy doesn't like that. No, he takes the guitar and he smashes it. Oh, she cries. I was sad too. It looked like a nice guitar. Like they're in eating dinner. She plays like four chords. She plays E major, which as we all know is the devil's chord. It is. And then uh, the confrontation occurs. She has another flashback to emo boy teaching her to play guitar, maybe. I forget. Every scene with him was the same location. So I'm not sure if they ever hung out away from that one blanket. Well, yeah, they hired that guy for like two hours of filming. Yeah. So they couldn't really. <laughs> um, let's see. My next note is that I made a funny joke about Scarlett Johansson, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Just take take our word for it. It was pretty good. Yeah. Um, the mother goes back to uh, proximity. She does. <laughs> and finds out that the birth mother has collapsed. Um, and then we suddenly... Flash forward to a week later when the mother has had the surgery and is fine. I mean, she's still got the cancer and she's probably going to die. But now we've been, you know, we we bought a little time for maybe a visit. They said that uh, it went great. Yeah, but maybe she should have had the surgery before she went on this long trip. Because, oh, what a dumb dumb. So the shunning basically effectively ends at this point. Yeah. We don't see Katie undergo any more shunning after this point in the story even though in theory it's still going on well we see half-hearted shun but the mother is sort of done she's like if you're gonna be shunned i'll be shunned too we'll we'll be in this shunning together i'm gonna tell you everything and so we see the rich lady tell her husband everything at the same time the mother is telling katie everything so their stories are sort of intermingling the mom was pregnant. Uh oh, something's going wrong. Sixteen year old also pregnant. Uh oh, I'm sixteen. Oh, and uh, you pointed out something smart. I did. Yeah, I was smart. You were smart. I love me. You often are. Uh, which is that um, the uh, the birth mother's story is like her grandmother was wealthy, but her mother had been disowned or something, mm-hmm. and so like they had no money, and she was 16 and she got pregnant and you were like they got shunned by their family i was like oh my god you're <laughs> so totally right did. <laughs> maybe that's what the shunning two is about maybe too maybe it's a prequel there is a well there is another shunning i movie. know uh, i forget what it's called it's oh. not called the shunning oh damn it i gotta look it up there's a whole series of books yeah look at it up oh the, the confession it's the called confession. um it's the sequel to the hallmark channel original amish movie the shunning Leaving behind her cloistered Amish life, Katie Lapp seeks the mother she has never known. So it's not Lamp, it's Lapp. <laughs> Who knew? It's really, really bad <laughs> accents. Katie Lapp is an innocent young Amish woman who's ventured out of her small Lancaster community for the first time since after a painful incident led to her quote-unquote shunning mm-hmm. from the very township that raised her. Dun, dun, dun. 
She finds Laura Mayfield Bennett, who is sadly dying of cancer. With only a few months to live, so the, 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 the... Yep, you're right. The surgery worked, but not for long. Bought her a few months, long enough to finally get to hang out with the daughter that she gave up so many years ago. Laura and her husband, Dylan, from Highlander. What? He's... Adrian Paul, Highlander. Oh. I don't know. He was probably a character actor in that movie, like some small guy, maybe a, I don't know. Prepare Laura's estate and will when Dylan, a greedy gambling addict, finds out that he will inherit close to nothing from his wife. Oh, Dylan's a greedy gambling addict. We thought he was a nice guy. We did. But he is a greedy gambling addict. He probably isn't even British. He's probably not. He hires an out-of-work actress, Allison, to pretend to be Laura's long lost Amish daughter, hoping Laura will take the bait and leave her entire estate to her only child. What? Why didn't we watch that movie? That movie sounds <laughs> awesome. So the deal is that the Amish, her Amish mother had was like eight months pregnant, but the uh, baby had a heart problem and died. Right. So she goes to the hospital, which is why the midwife slash baby catcher was not involved the baby dies and meanwhile the 16 year old gives birth to an unwanted child in the next room and so they decide to just kind of unofficially trade yeah which was really weird so they met like outside like in a like an abandoned part of the hospital and she just sort of hands them a baby and then they they ride off in the buggy and um now, even though it was 20 years ago, like 20 years ago was 1997. I think they had security at hospitals then. Like, I think they had some measures to make sure like people weren't walking out with babies. And I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I guess I feel like going out a side door probably isn't legit. In, in, in the labor and delivery units. Right. And like when the, you know, there's like a birth certificate and when the doctor is like, okay, so where's this baby that you gave birth to that we have a birth certificate for? And she's like, oh no, you got confused. That's the one that died. It's the other one. Yeah. I mean, what are you supposed to say? I ate it. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> the Maybe that's explored in the next movie I too. I think so. You know, in the werewolf situation. There really needs to be a werewolf. So the, the problem with the emo boy that is Katie's real love is that he drowned, but they never found the body. Right. And right before he dies, they're hugging, they're kissing on the lips. Very oh scandalous. Um, and he's like, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to promise me you'll get out of here. And so there's some foreshadowing of him going away somewhere, somehow. Something's going to happen to him, but they never found the body. So you're expecting that he left and that we're going to find him again. And it was frustratingly unexplored. And it made me want to punch Jake in the face just because he was the closest person to me. Um, and that would have been wrong. So instead, I just yelled, I'm sorry, Jake. I didn't really want to punch you in the face. I just wanted to punch something that made me mad well um you know i appreciate your yelling all the more now that i know what it was an alternative to so katie goes to talk to lma the baby catcher she says i know you're gonna shun me but i thought maybe i could talk and you could listen and, and she's I'll... like bitch come on in for some tea We're yeah good. some goddamn tea so katie explains the situation and says that she needs to go, maybe needs to go and see her mother to find out who she is. And I'll admit, this this whole scene was completely insufferable. I was very sad about it because LMA seemed like a great character, but mm -hmm. this scene made me want to vomit. <laughs> I believe you actually asked me if you could start vomiting. Yeah, you gave me permission, but I, I did. didn't. We, we both were models of self-restraint while we were watching uh -huh. this movie. <laughs> because she's like, you need to find out who you are. I know who you are. You're the little girl who loves picking flowers. You're the uh, girl who other random superficial bullshit. <laughs> you don't need to know anything about, you know, your genetics. You don't need to know anything about your personal family history. You're one of us. Yeah. There is one important takeaway from this scene. 
And that is? You noticed that both of the actresses had pierced ears. I did notice that. And yeah. it bothered me. Oh, and then Katie goes and is packing up her stuff. And her mom comes in. And they have a little thing. And um, Katie says to her mom that she needs to see her birth mom for various reasons. But she wants to thank her for for finding her the best family ever. Aww. You know, I may have cried a little. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not. No. Because yeah. I am a stone cold bitch who uh, hates everybody. I'm just a little, I'm a wimp. You're a softie. I am a softie. And then she goes to the bus station and her dad shows up. And This was a sweet moment. Because the dad is still shunning her, but gives her her dowry. Ah, but won't look at her. Right. But he does... <laughs> He remarks to the to the air, just to the air, that uh, maybe if you're going to New York, you need some money. And I was thinking, okay, so I was thinking, rich lady, rich husband, they're going to New York City. No, they're going to Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. What's her job? What is rich lady's job? Uh, being a rich wife. But then why does she? Well, I guess if you're rich, you just have an assistant. It just comes. I, with I don't it. know. I mean, the husband obviously. I also thought the assistant was her other daughter for a while, but that wasn't true. I don't think. I don't know what I thought. But yeah, the, the husband does have a gambling problem. We learn in the next movie anyway. So all these riches that are bastard. just a facade. You know what we should do to that guy? Shun him? We should shun him. <laughs> um, She gets on the bus and then she finds that there's another thing in the envelope. <gasps> what could be in the envelope? Something incredibly disappointing, I thought. Yeah, it was it was for her fucking song. I bet she knows it by heart. Well, I don't know. Like, it was sheet music. Yeah. That can't be for a song she wrote. She it, doesn't know. Well, it was that song that she'd been singing. Oh, okay. Firework. Fireflies. Yeah. Fireflies, not firework. No, it's not a Katy Perry song. <laughs> um, it actually turns out to be an unauthorized biography of Katy Perry. That's, what, <laughs> that's the twist ending to this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so it was the song that she'd been singing all along um, was was the song that she got the sheet music for. So maybe it's the song that the boyfriend taught her. I don't know, because she was singing that a little bit on the on the riverbank. Yeah. I don't know how she got this sheet music. The questions, unanswerable questions. But the movie ends. All right. So uh, I think that that takes us through... Beverly Lewis's The Shunning. The Shunning. An original Hallmark movie. Hallmark original movie. <laughs> Whatever. It was a movie. <laughs> yes. Did you like it? Um, That's another unanswerable question. Okay. No, I did not like it. I thought it was hilariously terrible. Yeah, and that nothing happens. So many other things could have happened. And I would have loved the movie if it did. And I think I need to make the movie somehow because there are so many things that could have happened. She could have gotten on the bus and then sat down and the boyfriend gets on the bus, like looking like a raggedy cool hipster because he is no longer Amish or... The guitar could have started clawing out of its own grave. That yeah. would have been a fantastic movie. I don't know where it would have gone after that, but so many wonderful things could have happened. Yeah, it uh, mostly I found it tolerable, uh, even though very little happened. The The scene at the end that I mentioned made me want to vomit uh, was tough. And this... There were a few times in this movie where I was like, how long is this movie? I know. I did the same thing. I'm like, because they haven't shunned yet. Right. But the title of the movie is The Shunning. Yeah. When is the shun going to happen? Right. There should have been more shunning. That's the other thing. So let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. If this were a kind of jello. Oh, I know the answer to this. What kind of jello is this? Plain. Plain. Plain jello. Just... Does it even have sugar in it? Oh God, no! No, that that's would prideful. be that's prideful. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I think, yeah, just just your plain gelatin, just a bucket of gelatin. Yeah, a bucket of gelatin from from one of the horses you shot. And then you're sad that uh, the woman that was going to marry you, who makes great chew fly pie, is, has run away to the the big city of Buffalo, and you just eat your 
your gelatin. You eat your feelings. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, thanks to Michelle and Stephanie for letting us hijack their podcast. And so I'm not exactly sure how the timing will end up working out, but hopefully their own guest episode of Love You Like Crazy will be up on our feed sooner or later, and you can check it out then. And you can follow them on Facebook at Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. I've been listening to this movie, and now you can follow the moon. F- no, I don't even know what accent that was. That was the worst. <laughs> Uh, you can follow them on Facebook at LifeMark, a made-for-TV podcast, or on Twitter at LifeMarkCast. You can email them at LifeMarkCast at gmail.com and uh, tell them to have us back or never have us back again. Uh, you can also visit EarTrumpetAudio.com for all your podcast needs, uh, or almost all of them, because you also should check us out separately. But um, you can follow them on Twitter at EarTrumpetAudio or on Facebook. That is the podcasting network of live mark and some other fantastic shows such as the songs that saved your life as if the realist and taxes and tater tots so again that's your trumpet audio.com and if you want to hear more from us you can go to love you like crazy.com and hear us rant about young adult books uh or get in touch with us on twitter at at love ya pod or through email at podcast at love you like crazy.com uh, we also have a Facebook page at Love You Like Crazy and a secret Facebook group that you have to write to us to ask to join. And so with all that said, for Life Mark, I'm Jake. I'm Carrie. And remember, if you put a letter in the fire, make sure it burns all the way 